On deck today we have a test of some body armor. I am currently wearing it. It is by Midwest Armor. And uh, these are ceramic plates which differentiates them from a lot of the plates that are very popular on the forums these days for testing. Most of those are steel. And there's pros and cons to steel. It's not all bad. It's not all good like anything else. But these are ceramic plates. And um, so they're a little bit more lightweight. And these are NIJ tested and uh, certified. But uh, this is YouTube after all, so I'm going to go ahead and test them myself. We're going to take them out of the plate carrier up first. We're going to take a closer look at them and get a look at some of the specs. And uh, then I'm going to head out to the range and uh, put them to the test. But up next, let's take a closer look at them. Here's the plate up close and personal. One thing you notice when you pick it up, obviously, is going to be that weight. It comes in right at 7.3 pounds, which is pretty lightweight, uh, considering what you get. Here on the back, it lists out what it is, some of the uh, specs that you're looking at. It's guaranteed for five years. And they do list the manufacturer date on there. This one here is manufactured April 2013, so very new. It's made in the USA as well, as it says here. It gives washing instructions. As you can see, this one needs to be washed. That said, we're probably going to take care of that here in about an hour. <laughs> it won't need to be washed anymore. It'll need a lot more than that. The dimensions on this is that it's going to be uh, 10 inches wide, 12 inches high. And just to give you kind of an idea, because I know a lot of my audience out there is former military, I do have an old uh, e savvy plate here. And this is a large ESAPI plate, and this is the Midwest Armor plate. So you can get an idea there of the actual size versus something that you may have a little bit of experience with. I do, I do realize that a lot of you are not prior military, so that's just for those of you that are. Um, it is NIJ certified, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, up to level four. And there's a bunch of different uh, testing protocol there. I'm going to put a link in the in the description of this video so you guys can check that out because I am certainly not a ballistician, as I've said before. And uh, the thickness of it, I also failed to mention, is right at one inch. It is curved, as you see here, so that way as you wear it, as you've seen throughout the video that I've been wearing it, it does uh, conform to your body and it's very comfortable. As Well, as comfortable as body armor can be anyway. We all know it's not all that comfortable in all reality. But um, it does have the cuts here in the shoulder, so that way when you're shouldering rifles or shotguns or whatever the case may be, you're able to do that without with as little interference as possible. But enough of me uh, yapping. Let's take this sucker out to the range and put some rounds in it. All right, guys, the gun used for the 9mm test will be the Sig Sauer P226. And we'll get into it coming up next. As you probably would have guessed there, the 9mm did next to nothing on this uh, level 4 plate. Went in there, no marks on the back whatsoever. Step it up to 40 cal and then we'll move on to the rifles. And the gun used for the 40 caliber test will be the Glock 22C. Full length barrel, but it is compensated. Get into it next. We had a little bit more energy coming out of the 40 cal. That was the uh, one right here. Top left in your screen there is the 40 cal. It did deform the uh, back a little bit. That may be just a combination of both shots. I really don't know. But obviously it stopped it with zero issue. Time to step it up to the rifle caliber. Uh, we'll start out with a 223 round. And the 223 will be going through this 16 inch cold hammer forged Palmetto State Armory barrel. Pretty easy to see the difference in energy between our rifle rounds and pistol rounds for those of you guys who aren't familiar with that and that shot went in there. Obviously we had the ceramic break up a little bit as it's designed to do. Pretty uh, not too bad deformation a little bit in there but clearly stopped the round there. No getting around that. And uh, ceramic did a, a job there on my uh, my cartridge cases here but you know what they're, they're good to go. Anyway step it up to the uh, 7.62 by 3.9 next. That 7.62 by 3.9 will be coming through this SKS rifle. Well, we moved the backstop on that one, so they're definitely transferring some serious energy. Um, but taking a look at the entry uh, area, you can see there, good bit of ceramic falling out. Like I said, that's designed that way. And uh, take a look here at the hole. Pretty nasty stuff. A little bit of deformation on there. Really not all that terrible. So, I stopped it, put my finger in there. There's still plenty of uh, 
ballistic material still left in there. So next up, we're gonna step it up to the big boy, the uh, 7.62 by 5.4 R. And we're breaking out the big guns here with the 7.62 by 5.4 R. This one here is Type 38 rifle. Let me just zoom in there and see exactly which kind we're using there. So it's not a full length barrel like, like you'd see on 9130, but no doubt about it, you're definitely still getting a lot of energy out of this carbine like barrel. I shouldn't have had that Red Army Standard box out there. What I should have had is one of these rounds. This is the Bulgarian surplus that we're using here. The silver tip, it's very, very common both here in the US as well as uh, by people that were fighting overseas. So we'll go ahead, show you the wound here or the impact area, if you will. This right here is where that round impacted. You could probably tell from the uh, shots from where it was impacting that there was some pretty nasty energy going along with that. That is a seriously powerful round equivalent to say a 30 out 6 for those of you unfamiliar with it. And we had some pretty pretty decent deformation there on the back. And uh, it held up to it though, no doubt about it. No penetration and uh, did what it was expected to. That's pretty much all the different rounds I brought out today to test it with but uh, I think I have some 7 and 6 which is pretty hot stuff uh, still sitting around. So I'm gonna shoot some of that as well because the 7N6, uh, as a lot of you guys know, is known as the poison bullet. But one thing that it also is, is a very fast bullet. That thing zips out of the barrel well over 3,000 feet per second and speed is the enemy of armor. So we'll test it up next and see if this uh, sucker can stand up to it. And that 7N6, as you see here, is gonna be coming out of this 16 inch spikes 5.45 upper. It held up to that round just fine. Taking a look at it here, you see that is where it entered. And outside the back, even though it's already had multiple rounds through it, it's still uh, still, in, still intact, no penetration. A little bit of deformation. If that was on your chest, you'd probably be having a bad day. But other than that, uh, you'd be glad you were wearing it. Without a doubt, this is one of the more fun videos I've made. Uh, it's not every day that you get to go out there and shoot uh, hundreds of dollars worth of body armor, test it, and uh, see it perform well, which is always a good thing as well. I want to uh, thank Midwest Armor for supplying the plates here for today's test. Um, you guys saw one shot up today. I shot one off camera as well just to make sure that the results were duplicatable, and they were. Um, no issues with that one as well. You'll see pictures of it at the end here. And um, the fact that, they're, that they were confident enough to send their plates out for testing uh, just shows what kind of company they are. Um, obviously here on the channel, I'm not a ballistics lab. I'm a dude in a field shooting some stuff up. So um, the fact that they were confident enough to put that themselves out there and uh, believe in their product uh, shows a lot. So all in all, the plates did everything I asked and anything most people would ask out there. Um, performed well in the test. And uh, if you're looking for some uh, relatively lightweight uh, level 4 body armor, this is definitely something you should take a look at. But if you guys have any questions out there about this video, how it was conducted, um, what specific rounds I put in there, um, feel free to post below in the comment section. If you don't have a YouTube account, you can always post over on my Facebook page. I do my best to answer all those questions. But thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Still good? Yeah, just put some duct tape on it. Perfect. Just like new.